Hey, thanks for tuning in with us today as we are journeying along on our summer road trip called Are We There Yet? We are going to be discovering a hidden gem, Jeff, this time found in Blackfield, New Brunswick. Awesome. And of course, we have another Nate's Nifty drink for you. Today, it's the Orange Creamsicle Smoothie. Woo! And Pastor Kevin is going to be continuing journeying through the book of Revelation, this time focusing on the Battle of Armageddon and the Apocalypse. Oh, awesome. Can't wait for that. And uh, we're curious if you've been able to go and experience any of these hidden gems that we've talked about uh, through these last weeks. Let us know in the comments of the video or shoot us a message. That's right. Remember, life will take you many places, so follow the signs. So, are we there yet? I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness To your glorious day You called Welcome to week number eight of our summer road trip 
are we there yet? Let me tell you, we're closer than we've ever been before. And as we've been learning, if we're not at the end as we know it, well, we are getting closer. And that's not something to fear, at least as believers. It's something to encourage one another with. 1 Thessalonians 4.18 says, Therefore, encourage each other with these things. And I've told you time and time again, when you see a therefore in Scripture, always ask, what for? Let's go back a few verses to read the what for. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. You can encourage each other knowing you have nothing to fear. As believers, you'll be snatched away, caught up in the clouds. Rapture, the Bible says, and you can encourage one another knowing we're going to miss the mess of the great tribulation. See, there's nothing to fear in the book of Revelation. We've received the warning for all believers. This heads up as in golf. And we believe we have everything to look forward to. See, our reward is getting closer. That The problems of this old world will one day melt away. And we won't be in the heat of it while they're melting. Our road trip this summer takes a sudden turn upward, way up. And we get to be, as the scripture says, with the Lord forever. Well, maybe not this summer, but someday. And so we're to encourage one another with these words, not to freak one another out with the things of revelation that will never affect us. See, believers for centuries now did not fear this rapture. They relished in it. They look forward to it. And they encouraged one another with it. But our culture has so shifted, has twisted the plots of Scripture and made them into horror movies. We've gotten so comfortable in our homes and in our lifestyles that we're not so sure we even want to go to heaven, and certainly not right away. I mean, before we make any big decisions here about heading off to heaven, how fast will the internet be? I mean, what, what about all, all that, that, that we will miss here on earth? We're a pretty messed up culture, biblically speaking at least. The, the things that are uh, most important to us must cause God to shake his head at times or even chuckle. And then the things that that don't seem to matter much to us at all, well, they must do the same. See, let me assure you, when we finally see Jesus, when we see our heavenly home, when, when we come face to face with Jesus, when, when we truly reach the end of this road, we will not be disappointed. But Satan will be. He will have his time, sure. But it too will come to an end. In the very last book of the Bible, that revelation of Jesus written down by John, the last living disciple, we've been learning a little about apocalyptic literature. Uh, The reason for the strange images on the road signs toward the end. And we've been learning the good news of all this too. 
that, that as believers, we won't be here for any of the outpouring of God's wrath. Uh, these trumpet judgments, the bowls of wrath being poured out, or the beast. Which brings me to today's topic, largely taken from Revelation chapter 13. Now, you were to have read Revelation 13 through 16 for today, and I hope you did your homework because I've got some important information for all believers about the mark of the beast. It's Revelation 13 where this concept of the mark of the beast comes from. The 666 that you both hear about in movies and prefer not to have included in your social insurance number, license plate, or phone numbers. You can find uh, it all over the place. People will ask me about this number, it appearing in their social insurance number, or on their license plate, and in their phone number. They ask about this, and, and they want to know, have I just accepted the mark of the beast? I'll be back in just a few minutes to tell you some important information about 666 and the mark of the beast. Welcome to Nace Nifty Drinks. Today we're making an orange creamsicle smoothie. All right, so there's a little bit of prep work first. You gotta take your 11 ounce can of mandarin oranges, empty the juice out, then put the mandarin oranges in a Ziploc bag and freeze it for several hours. All right, next, empty your mandarin oranges into your blender, just like this, and your half cup of pineapple chunks, frozen, of course. Add your half cup of vanilla yogurt. Add your one tablespoon of sweet honey. Oh yes, put it in there. It's be beautiful. One cup of milk. Add eight cubes of ice. Finally, blend to your preferred consistency. All right, then pour your orange creamsicle smoothie in your glass. If you find it a little too thick, feel free to add some more milk. All right, here it is. Let's give it a taste, and don't forget your wacky straw. That is one good orange creamsicle smoothie. All right, Jeff, we are in Blackville, New Brunswick. Yeah, a fun fact for you. Did you know the first post office here was in 1842 under the name of Decantalum? Wow. All right, Jeff, I'm going to show you a hidden gem, Vickers Tubing. But there's other great hidden gems like upriver ice cream. Awesome. We're going to move into another form of worship now, uh, which is worshiping or giving. You know, there's no obligation to give from us, but a great opportunity to give a, a portion of what God has already given to us back to Him to be used to just reach people and to show and spread his love. Uh, so let's just pray for the gift. You can see the, the w different ways that you can give now. Um, but let's just pray. God, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you've done. And I thank you for your gifts. I thank you for your blessings. God, right now, I just pray that you bless every gift. I pray that you bless every giver. And uh, just be with us as we worship here together today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's continue with our worship as Pastor Kevin leads us in our next segment, Worship in Nature. Well, take this opportunity with me now just to step outside into the beauty of God's creation. And even as we enjoy all that he has created, let us take a, a moment just to, to worship the one who created it all. I love to, to be outside. I love to be in the beauty of God's creation, and I love to give him credit for his goodness. Enough with this mother nature and, uh, and the other things that try to steal away his credit. God, you are good. God, you are a creator of this beauty that is before us. God, we thank you for the sunshine, the moon and the stars. We thank you for blue skies and we thank you for the river, the trees. Uh, God, we thank you for the birds of the air. God, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. God, you are amazing. God, you are good. God, we, we just leave for a moment the situations and circumstances that we know we got to deal with and we got to face, the, the troubles and the difficulties. God, we, we leave those behind for a few minutes and we acknowledge that you are with us, that you are for us, that, that you are on our side. The Bible says, your word, God, it, it, it says that, 
that if God is for us, who can be against us? Well, we know clearly who's against us. And we thank you clearly for being for us, for being with us, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so we take this, this moment and we thank you. And we say we love you. We want to just continue to, uh, to focus in on you and to thank you that you are God and that we are not. Thank you that your ways are better than our ways. God, thank you that, that you are the living God. We worship you. We love you. We praise you. We adore you. We acknowledge we need you. And oh God, we want you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace.
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. At the close of Revelation 13, which discusses the beast, also known as the Antichrist, and his false prophet, we read in verses 16 and 17 about the mark of the beast. The beast forced all people, it says, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. And then in verse 18, it says, this calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. The mark of the beast is something people must receive. According to scripture, after uh, the rapture and during the tribulation, in order to buy and sell, the number 666 is somehow associated with the beast or antichrist as his number. The meaning of 666 is a mystery and it appears that the apostle John or Jesus himself intended it to be that way. Calculating it, John says, requires wisdom. Some people, uh, by assigning a number value to each letter of a name or a word, and then combining these number values uh, to arrive at a total number, have identified the Antichrist as various people in world history. Or most recently, I've received actual emails from people and video clips explaining how coronavirus, when you do the math, equals 666, innocently not realizing that this strain of coronavirus may be new, but coronaviruses are nothing new. And I've been showing how COVID-19 also adds up to equal the number 666. But I've seen the same thing, honestly, is used to show how President Trump, President Obama, and Prime Minister Trudeau all can be shown numerically to equal 666. Is it a coincidence that Ronald Wilson Reagan Each of those three names has just six letters? (laughs) I think so. And several popes throughout history have been shown by Protestants, of course, to equal 666 and to be clearly the Antichrist. Virtually any name, any word, can add up to 666 if enough mathematical gymnastics are employed. It's a good thing that John mentioned wisdom is needed. There's a lot of people with very little wisdom pounding away on their calculators, I'd say. And it's not just people or viruses. Uh, Back a few years ago, it was barcodes uh, that the chips in our credit cards were also perhaps the mark of the beast. And and most recently, uh, my favorite, the artwork on Monster Energy drinks. Clearly, uh, you see the six uh, six, or rather the three sixes in these Hebrew symbols. It's, uh, it's crazy. The, the lengths that some people will go to in order to find 666 are absolutely amazing. I don't believe for a second that the 
Antichrist, that the beast, A, is here yet, and B, is going to secretly try to get me to drink energy drinks as a way of covertly um, accepting his mark. See, many people now think that the mark of the beast will be an implanted microchip that allows people to access their digital currency. Uh, 666 will somehow identify the beast. That part is correct. It's true. But precisely how 666 is connected to the beast is not really the main point of Revelation chapter 13, nor is it uh, the point of the rest of Revelation. Interestingly, to me at least, uh, the Bible often uses the number seven to refer to God and his perfection. Traditionally, six is thought to be the number of humanity created on the sixth day and always falling short of the perfect goodness of God. The beast or antichrist will strive to be like God, but he will likely even claim to be God and will clearly, just as the number six falls short of the number seven, so will the beast or antichrist with his trinity of sixes ultimately fall short of God. He may try to defeat God. He may have some good days, but we know how this all ends. We, we've read the end of the book. We, we see in Revelation. But, but just before we start pounding away on calculators, uh, trying to figure out who this beast is, as so many seem to do, before we skip ahead to the end, you should know there's nothing a believer can do to receive this mark right now. It's not something you can take by accident. Listen, the mark of the beast doesn't exist yet. And as believers, relax. It's a mystery still. You won't be here when it does come into existence. You won't be here when the mystery is relieved. You don't need to know. In my reading of Revelation and also in the Old Testament, the prophet Daniel, it, it seems that part of the reason it's a mystery is it doesn't yet exist and will not exist until the Antichrist comes into his full power. And as a believer, again, I won't be here. And there's no need for you to be here either. It appears that receiving this mark, being a number or a name, it seems to me it's, it's not going to be a sneaky or covert kind of thing. It's going to be an outright allegiance demanded to the Antichrist. And importantly, an outright required denial of Jesus Christ. Make no mistake, the Antichrist may appear initially to come to bring about world peace, but after taking control of power, after bringing together 10 countries, after receiving his full and long-awaited authority, the beast won't be subtle. The beast and popular culture will be clearly anything goes but one, but Jesus. But by the time this mark comes into play, as believers, we'll be long gone. And the beast will force all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. But, but the beast isn't here, and you shouldn't be either when he is here. So go ahead. 
Uh, don't be afraid of your phone number. Don't worry about your social insurance number. Use the chip on your credit card. And in fact, in moderation, have an energy drink. Ooh, I feel the power. <laughs> Listen, seriously, the mark of the beast is no laughing matter but I'm not ever going to need to take it or even have the option to take it, much less make a mistake by taking it. There'll be no decision for me to make and it cannot be forced upon me. After all, I'm a child of the Most High God. See, in the same way as we read that Noah and his family got in that old ark before it started raining, and God got Lot out of Sodom before the fire and brimstone fell, and, and God let all his children cross the Red Sea on dry land before that wall of water closed in, as a child of the Most High God, God's going to take care of me. God's going to take care of his own. He wants to take care of you. And you, you need not fear being fooled into taking any mark of the beast. As a believer, you simply need to wait to be rescued. As a child of the Most High God, you are safe and secure from all those things that we're reading about uh, in this chapter or in these uh, chapters. Uh, you are an adopted son or daughter of the king. You're a joint heir with Jesus, the Bible says, and you have all the rights and privileges of a child of the Most High God. Embrace it. Encourage one another with these words. Go ahead, call out to your heavenly father now. Ask him, are we there yet? And then let him know that you're ready. Let's pray. Father God, we're ready. We just receive your goodness. We thank you that we are children of the most high God. Thank you, God, that we are forgiven that we are safe from all harm, that we don't have to fear the beast or the mark of the beast, that you are God, that you are bigger, that you are large and in charge, that you are our heavenly father, that we are protected and provided for, that we are empowered, that we will prosper, God, that we are children of the most high God. And we thank you for the promises we read in scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, your homework now? You ready? Well, this week we need you to read Revelation 16 through 20. And I want you to check in again with, uh, with me next week as I help you to understand the apocalypse and the battle of Armageddon. I'll see you next week for more. Are we there yet? All right, Jeff, we have made it to our hidden gem this week, Vickers Tubing in Blackpool, New Brunswick, and you can rent these bad boys for a three-hour trip down river. Oh, a three-hour tour? <laughs> okay, Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, make sure you try that. Lots of fun. And also try Nate's Nifty Drink, the orange creamsicle smoothie. Yeah, that's so right. good. And remember, Pastor Kevin challenged us to enjoy our rights and privileges of being a child of God. And make sure you do your homework this week. Read Revelation chapter 17 through 20. That's right. We are so glad that you joined us today. And we hope that you tune in next week as we journey through Revelation a little bit more and we focus on the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, and the Apocalypse. It's going to be great. Now remember, life will take you many places. So follow the signs. To tubing. <laughs> <laughs>